Welcome to the setup stage of the series. In this video, we're going to be configuring our desktop and IDE of choice, in this case, Visual Studio Code. I'll be completing this video from within a new virtual environment, so I'll be doing everything from scratch. The links to all the resources used can be found in the description. First, we'll start by installing Python 3.11. Visit the Python website and download the 3.11 installer for your system. Once the download finishes, run the installer, tick the Add to Path checkbox, and click Install Now. Once the install finishes, click Disable Path Length Limit, and Python is now installed. Next, we'll need to install Windows Subsystem for Linux. This part is Windows specific, so if you're using a different OS such as Mac or Linux, feel free to skip this section. To install WSL, head over to the Microsoft WSL page to find out more information about the install process. On Windows 10 and 11 systems, which are up to date, installing WSL should be as simple as opening the start menu, typing CMD, clicking run as administrator, and punching in WSL install. After this, you'll be walked through the WSL installer and you should be fine using the default settings. You'll need to create a new username and password for this Ubuntu Linux install, and we'll likely need to restart once the install finishes. Once that's done, we'll continue to the next part. With WSL installed, we'll now need to download Docker Desktop, which we'll later be using to containerize our license server for easy deployment. We'll also be using Docker on our virtual private server, also known as a VPS, to run our website. Head over to the Docker Desktop website and click Download. Afterwards, run the installer and continue until completion, rebooting if necessary. As a brief aside, Docker Desktop is only free for small businesses with fewer than 250 employees and less than $10 million in annual revenue. However, if you're watching this video, I think it's safe to say it's early days and we're a little ways out from having to worry about this issue. The last bit of software left to install is our IDE, and in this series we'll be using VS Code. Head over to the VS Code website and download the installer for your platform. During installation, you may want to enable the context menu checkboxes to make opening a folder as a workspace easier from within the Windows Explorer right-click menu. Once you finish running the installer, open up VS Code so we can install some extensions that'll make development a whole lot easier. First, look for the Python extension pack, which is a set of VS Code extensions that'll streamline the development of Python applications with features such as linting and IntelliSense. It'll also speed up our license server development with support for the Django framework. Next, we have the Black Formatter, which is a useful extension for standardizing Python code. While this extension is optional, I encourage you to try it out as it'll make the code you write a lot more uniform. Lastly, we'll need the Path IntelliSense extension, which will make it easier to write relative paths to files should we need them. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up. Apparently it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now, all that's left to do is to configure our workspace and launch settings. First, create a directory where we'll be storing our project files, then open this folder in VS Code. Once open, trust the directory and create another folder in the root of the workspace named .VS Code. Inside this folder, we'll create a file called settings.json. Now within this file, we'll punch in the following settings. Note that these settings are Windows specific and you may need to do some tweaking to make them work on your platform. The first setting creates a new terminal profile that'll automatically activate the virtual environment we create later in this series. Note that the reason why we use the command python-m pipenv shell instead of pipenv shell directly is so that we have easy access to the command history during development by pressing the up and down arrows in the terminal. You'll be able to test this later once the virtual environment is up and running. For now, we'll leave the line setting the default profile commented until we create the virtual environment. Next, this line clears the terminal every time we start debugging, making it easier to follow the stack trace if an error occurs. Feel free to disable this at any point, as it's optional. Third, we exclude files from the Explorer menu on the left, as these file extensions are generated by Scython during the build process. This will make a lot of sense later in the series, so I highly recommend adding these settings now so your Explorer remains readable in the future. Lastly, we configure the black formatter to allow lines up to 100 characters, as GUI configuration lines tend to be quite long. The last step in our setup process is adding launch configurations so we can test our program quickly within VS Code. In the same .VS Code directory, create another file named launch.json and copy the following configurations. The first configuration directly executes the main.py file, which we'll later create in our source folder, as this file will be the entry point for our application. The second configuration runs the file currently being edited, and we can optionally pass arguments to this file if required by uncommenting this line and adding arguments as necessary. Once we save everything, our environment is ready to go. If you're enjoying this series so far, consider subscribing. And if you're ready to move on to setting up our project dependencies, click the video on the left. Until next time.